The following program is brought to you by Caltech. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. And it's so gratifying to see so many of you. Uh, my name is Tom Soderstrom. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for IT at JPL. And uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes, and I promise it's very few, just to introduce it and put it in context. This is the beginning of a very long journey. And I think you're here at a historic moment of where we start that long journey in the right way. That long journey for us is big data. As the CTO at JPL, I look at the future, I look at the future of IT, and then try to taste test it now, try to bring it into the hands of the engineers and the scientists that do mighty things, like putting Curiosity on Mars. Big data is the future, and we're just getting started. But how do you get your arms around big data? Well, you can't get your arms around it unless you can understand it. How do you understand it? It's about being able to visualize it. It's about able to describe it. And our journey will be, the first step is to be able to describe it, and the next one is going to be to be able to prescribe it. Basically, based on this data, we're going to suggest that you do these things. The final step is to predict it. Based on the data, we will now predict that this will happen. All the way through is being able to tell the story that we're able to pull from that big data. How do you tell the story? You visualize it. How do you tell an interesting story? You visualize it in an interesting way. Can big data be beautiful? Well, at the end of the day, you tell us. I'm very proud of the organizers of this event, Hillary, Maggie, and Scott. And I'm very proud of the institutions, Caltech, JPL, and the Arts Center, for putting this together. I'm also very proud of all of you for being here, taking time out of your busy schedule to participate. And I hope it is participate. Meet with each other in the break, think differently, learn how to do things differently, and create like JPL uh, and NASA uh, tried and did on Curiosity, dare mighty things. For outcome of this, I hope it is create mighty visualizations. Now, I would like to introduce uh, Scott, Scott Davidoff. And uh, he has been only a year at JPL, which in JPL time is a very short amount of time. But he is the one who's going to drive us into this new journey of visualizing the big data in an exciting, in a novel way, in something we've never seen before. And uh, we have people like Dan Goods, who is, have taught us that science can be beautiful. Now, he's got, Scott's going to drive us into where science, big data can be beautiful. He has an interesting background. He's now a supervisor of the Human Interfaces Group at JPL. He's got a PhD from Carnegie Mellon. And uh, what he really is passionate about is this. So if you see him start levitating, that's a good thing. That means he's passionate. He was a journalist. He was a public defender. And he ran an interactive agency in New York for 10 years. So he's got a varied background. He loves cultures. He loves trying to understand. And this is what this is all about. He traveled for three years in Africa and in the Middle East. And now he's going to travel through the world of big data with you all. So let me introduce Scott. And I hope you have a fantastic day and uh, create mighty visualizations. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I thought a nice way to start would be to ask everybody, um, why are we here? Um, and I think this is something that I mean both in the very literal uh, mundane way, but also in the, the pursuits that we all share. And I think we have so much in common. And that's really the subject of what I'd like to use to introduce this uh, symposium. Despite the varied backgrounds of artists, designers, engineers, and scientists, we are all driven by practices that involve questions. Um, research is the business that we do, and creativity is the currency. 
But also, in a bigger sense, I think we share a lot in common. So I'll ask again, why are we here? This is how some people think about this question. Or others, why are we here? Um, and still others, why are we here? And I think for even some of us, are we here? <laughs> I'd like to introduce the subject of visualization as another entry point into the same practice so that we can think about it as a different kind of inquiry. Visualization is, of course, already part of everybody's uh, everyday experience. We might use visualization, for example, to investigate patterns. Or we might use visualization to investigate patterns. Or we might use visualization to investigate patterns. Of course, visualization has many other benefits. Um, it's often used to persuade. Here in this visualization of uh, cancer mortality, I think the persuasive message is avoid New England if you're a man. <laughs> um, it's also, I think, essential to the thinking process itself. In fact, many of us at one point can imagine a conversation between Watson and Crick, where one of them says, I think I've got it. It's a, it's a double helix. And the other says, a double what? Oh, a double helix. Seeing it makes it understandable. Visualization appears to us in the most unexpected places where ideas just burst out. And visualization is also a tool to make the tiny, invisible, and mysterious intelligible and simple. So why are we here? Well, there is very often an emphasis on big data. And I think what we are lacking is what we should and can do with big data. So in part, what I would like to do is talk about what visualization is. This is actually a huge topic. And the reason that we've invited these wonderful speakers here today is to touch on this subject in various ways. I think as good as I can do for now is to identify some of the elements that visualizations share and use them to explain something about us as a community. Big data certainly requires big data. Less obvious, perhaps to some, more to others, is one of the most expressive forms, expressive ways to examine and interrogate data is computation. But there are other elements to ways to visualize and understand the world. Currently, we are evolving new ways to interact with data. Um, visualization also often includes powerful visual clarity and being able to express ideas unambiguously. There's one element that I think is sometimes challenging to express, particularly to a scientific community, 
So this is as good as I can figure out how to do that. If elegance is what makes mathematics beautiful, aesthetics is what makes visualization beautiful. The world of visualization is not one where the myth of the lone wolf scientist can exist. And that's one of our main goals here today. It's really to create a community and one that is transdisciplinary, where we learn how to cultivate and demonstrate leadership in the, in the process and by enacting and working together at this time, now, we can take that position of leadership and help define to the rest of the world how data can become meaningful. Well, why the three institutions that we've invited today? Caltech, of course, has a tradition of wicked problems. The scientists at Caltech don't just pick random numbers. They have hypotheses and seek out specific data and then interrogate that data. There's a deep tradition of inquiry here. Why JPL? Um, I think we'll find it's actually quite similar, and we have space robots. <laughs> to describe Cal, uh, Art Center's uh, place here, I'd like to introduce the director of the Interaction Design Program at Art Center, uh, Maggie Hendry. <laughs> Good morning, thank you. Many of us have asked at Art Center, what does that mean, visualization? We're very used to looking at infographics. Is that our world? And we rather feel that that's a flat land, and we want to play in this three-dimensional, four-dimensional space. So we have a culture of investigating and finding out and prototyping and iterating, a practice that we feel meshes very nicely with the practice of our colleagues at JPL and Caltech. But I think we also bring to the table a little bit of divergent thinking. How do we provoke? How do we communicate? How do we persuade? How do we tell stories? How do we show leadership in what is beautiful and meaningful and not misleading? How do we apply this to a purpose that we think is important, be it aesthetically, be it in our politics or sociology or education? So to that end, Art Center has begun a number of initiatives, actually. Our graphics design department, now with Chris Hacker and Nick Haffermas, they run an information visualization program. We have our graduate media program, where people are looking very much into the interrogation, the abstraction of our concepts and how we use data in different ways. And last year, we launched the interaction design program, where we hope to have people who, from the ground up, are now training in this way of thinking and making and collaborating with our colleagues here. So with that, I'm actually going to pass it over to Hillary, who's going to tell us a little bit more about how this fits into a larger program. Today's events are just one in a whole program of events to build this community in practice. Thank you. Hi. Um, thanks for coming again. I'm Hilary Mushkin. I'm a visiting professor here at Caltech. And um, we are, Maggie and Scott and myself have been working together not only on this symposium, but we are also working on a summer of visualization. It's a summer internship program that we're starting this year. And we have um, five interns that we've hired, three students who are in computer um, science and two design students who are going to be all working together on three sets of uh, visualization problems, two that come from Caltech labs and one that is a JPL problem. The Caltech problems are focused on uh, wall turbulence and on brain uh, networks. And the JPL, um, the JPL 
problem is a systems engineering problem. So we're really excited about that, and we're really excited to actually dig in and, and enact this idea of collaboration this summer. Uh, we also have plans for some other data visualization experts to come uh, during the summertime and give more talks, so you'll be hearing from us about this. We have um, Ben Fry, who's the creator of Processing, who's coming, and also Aaron Koblin, who is the leader of the data arts group at Google. So. Um, we're excited about having more interaction outside of our own communities and bringing them in here as well. As well, um, I am teaching a class here at Caltech with Santiago Lambeda, who is a CACR staff scientist and has been doing data visualization here for over 10 years at Caltech. And uh, it's a data visualization projects course. It's a 100 level um, course. And we're really excited about some of the projects that students are making in that class, and they're really um, informing the way that they think about data in new and exciting ways that are visually uh, informed by visual practices. So we're very excited about that. Um, and we're excited to have all of you here today to begin uh, a new sort of uh, collective conversation and new uh, perspective that uh, on uh, data and visualizing data in new ways. So with that, I'm going to pass it back to Scott to introduce our first speaker. Thanks.